Reporting succulents is something I talk about quite often and have a few videos on why it's an important part of succulent maintenance. But many people seem to experience a negative impact on their succulents when they report. In fact, when I sell to public ed markets, I often get asked how long has it been since I reported the succulents. Some customers get worried the plants get potted up just before I sell them and say they've had a negative experience with recently reported succulents. Similarly, I get comments on my reporting videos asking what to do about recently reported succulents that have all of a sudden started to lose leaf and die off. When trying to troubleshoot with my customers, a few possible reasons come up time and time again. In this video, we'll have a look at why reported succulents can go bad and I'll also link my older videos on how to report succulents and why it's so important to do. When you buy succulents from garden centers online and even in plant nurseries, they may be grown in completely different climates and often in very fancy greenhouses. Despite succulents being tough plants, they are a living thing and can get a bit of a shock. Many of us when getting new plants will repot them into a new pot almost immediately and once they start going bad, it would make sense to blame it on reporting. However, the reporting may simply coincide with the plant having a shock from change of scenery and being removed from its nice cozy greenhouse and flung into the real world. This shock from being moved can also happen on a smaller scale when you suddenly decide to put your succulent in a completely different spot. It can be a move from a sunny position to more shade or the other way around. When succulents are reported especially into a bigger pot that does not fit the original spot, it's quite common to move it elsewhere. A lot of the hardy varieties will tolerate changes, but there are some succulent types that can become a bit unhappy when their growing spot changes. None of these, these or these are likely to grow well in an average greenhouse and will very probably die in about 3 months. Succulents that are not suitable for growing in those long term tend to go from this to this. Similar to reason number one, it is likely that reporting is coinciding with putting sun-loving succulents indoors and is not the actual reason for the succulents decline. There are suitable succulents for indoors you can use and they usually look like these, these and these. Just like with many things these days, it can be very difficult to get a good quality product that says it does what it's supposed to. Even if you buy expensive succulent potting mix, it can actually be a bit rubbish. I've tried many potting mixes for my nursery plants and sometimes the difference between them was physically visible. The place I've been buying since starting the nursery tests for pH and makes sure each batch is a good quality. I have a video on what good quality succulent potting mix should look like, which I'll tag in the description. Although many hardy succulents will tolerate growing even in gravel, some succulents can kill over when the potting mix is not right. Bad potting mix can have out of whack pH, can be too well draining or too heavy thanks to overuse of sand. If you report one of the more sensitive succulents into a potting mix like that, it can suffer a bit. When reporting succulents, it is ideal to leave a bit of a gap between the most bottom set of leaves and the potting mix. If the plant goes in the potting mix too much, it can set off rot. It mostly applies to rosette type succulents, but can sometimes affect others too. Let me demonstrate on this Echeveria neon breakers. It's pretty root bound and needs reporting. Some Echeveria grow very low to the ground, so it can be hard to completely avoid contact with potting mix, which is not the end of the world. But you certainly won't want to report like this. The soil should not cover the base of the leaves or go over them and into the rosette. 
The way it's sitting in the pot at the moment is way too low. Once the potting mix gets wet, it will likely start rotting the leaves and potentially the stem too. After the rot gets into the stem, it is very hard to save a plant. Whatever you do, don't do this. Instead, seed the plant a little higher. I'm going to shake off all the potting mix that got in between the leaves and do it correctly this time. I'll also create a bit of space at the top by breaking some of the potting mix away. This is how, in my opinion, succulents should sit in a new pot, just a little bit above the potting mix and the rim of the pot. As the plant grows, it is likely to push the older bottom leaves down a bit and it may end up touching the potting mix, but this is unlikely to kill it. If you're repotting rosette succulents or those with leaves close to the ground level, try not to bury the leaves and give them a bit of space from the potting mix. This does not apply to trailing plants as the stalks will benefit from contact with soil or potting mix. Just for reference, this is what will probably happen to succulent leaves that touch the potting mix. It's fine and pretty normal. Not all succulents are hardy and some need lots and lots of TLC to thrive. When these are repotted, they can suddenly die from no apparent reason. This is not your fault and can happen to anyone. I grow a lot of new hybrids every year and some need absolutely perfect greenhouse conditions to thrive. Anything even repotting can throw them off enough to start losing leaves. Also, succulents, just like other living things, are prone to genetic mutations which can make them weaker. Sometimes I'd have a hundred of the same succulent in the same potting mix and the same position and one or two just die while the others thrive. These plants would have likely eventually died no matter what I did. So if you have a plant die suddenly after repotting and you've done everything right, don't beat yourself up too much. It may just have been bad luck. Reporting triggers growth in succulents and other plants. The extra nutrients and space for the roots will result in the plant growing above ground. The leaves tend to spread out, grow thinner, wider, longer and less colourful. These growing leaves also lack a good farina coating. Farina is the white powdery substance on leaves that helps protect against strong UV and is kind of like sunscreen many succulents produce. But, if your recent reporting coincides with a heatwave and the succulent is exposed to direct sun, it is more likely to suffer burns or shock. As a consequence, some of the leaves can fall off and the plant may even die. My advice would be to put reported succulents under shade cloth or in a morning sun-afternoon shade position, so it's not exposed to the sun's UV once it gets hot. It is not unusual these days that heat waves arrive as soon as mid-spring when most succulents grow rapidly. 30% shade cloth will eliminate the risk. If you don't have this, moving reported succulents into shade for the duration of the heat wave will help greatly. And that's it for today. I hope this video was useful and if you'd like to add something or have a question to ask, you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents, hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.